Welcome HomeKit fans to HomeKit Versus, the series where we pit popular products from our favorite smart home platform against each other and see who comes out on top. If that sounds like your thing, give that subscribe button and bell icon a one-two punch and KO that like button. You're most likely familiar with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as smart home protocols for your HomeKit home, and if you've been around the space for a bit, you've probably heard the debate between to hub and not to hub. These hubs that everyone is speaking about are essentially translators between different wireless standards and the internet. The most commonly used wireless standard that requires a hub in HomeKit is Zigbee. Think something like Philips Hue or Acura. But there's a new kit on the block that's making waves and you may already have its hub. That's right, today we're pitting the solid smart home standard Zigbee against the newest talk of the town thread to see which prominent protocol prevails. I do want to thank both Acura and Eve for providing some of the products we used in today's video, but that will in no way affect the outcome of today's match, and you'll find links to all of the different products that we use in today's video in the description box just below that like button. With that out of the way, touch gloves and come out fighting. In the first of our three round rumble, our two competitors duke it out in terms of speed and reliability. On the surface, they have a lot in common, but there are several other very important differences between Zigbee and Thread that you should know about. Zigbee and Thread are both mesh networks, which essentially means that all components of the network, or at least most of them anyway, work together to efficiently communicate whatever message is being sent. In our HomeKit home context, this usually means more reliability because there are more ways for that message to get where it's going. In my experience, both Zigbee and and thread have been a rock solid in terms of reliability. But you may also be concerned with how fast these messages are communicated and both of these standards average right around 250 kilobits per second. But as Brian from Automate Your Life so aptly points out, we often equate speed with how fast devices respond to requests, which would be latency. While the data here shows that Thread beats Zigbee by about 20 milliseconds, I wanted to test if this was even noticeable. So I grabbed a Zigbee smart plug from Acura and a Thread and enabled Eve Energy, connected a couple of lamps to them, combined them in a group in HomeKit, and... Contrary to popular belief, Thread does require a hub. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean border router, at least in how it's playing out in HomeKit. Now, I'm definitely no networking expert, but I do know someone who plays one on YouTube. Chris, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing well, taking a little break from things and enjoying life with a puppy, Dustin. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining me. So to me as an idiot, they seem like they're exactly the same, just with different names. Am I right? Am I wrong? Uh, no, they are actually very, very different things. The networking layer, that's where things really, really change, right? And that's what uh, makes Thread really interesting. So Zigbee um, had a bunch of different networking layers they could use but most of it's proprietary, right? What Thread changed is they use something called the internet protocol or specifically IPv6. And this is like, you can think of this like the glue that ties all the stuff together, right? It's the, uh, the, the Lord of the Rings of the networking protocols. So going down the line with the routers and the signal repeaters and the end devices, is that the same or does it differ? So the difference is that in, within a Thread network, you can actually tell which one of the devices are actually a Thread router i.e. they're doing the repeating. So right. Zigbee, on the other hand, you may buy a Zigbee plug or a Zigbee light, but there's no guarantee you're going to have the repeater function in it, right? So that's where things get a little bit, a little bit interesting is you're not quite sure what you're getting across the different vendors. So without getting too overly complicated, let's have a look at the structure of these two networks. In order to communicate with the outside world, Zigbee uses what is referred to as a hub or a gateway, whereas Thread uses what it calls a border router. To strengthen and extend the range of their networks, Zigbee employs signal repeaters, whereas Thread utilizes so-called routers. Both signal repeaters and thread routers help to clean up the network traffic and reinforce communication channels. And finally, Zigbee and Thread both terminate with end devices. These devices can send and receive messages, but only from the end device to its signal repeater or hub 
or thread router or border router respectively. As you can see, the structures of these two networks are pretty damn similar, but there is a significant difference in what happens if a Zigbee signal repeater or a thread router have their connections interrupted. Is there something going on in terms of the self-healing properties of these two networks, like when a thread router is, is interrupted or a Zigbee signal repeater is disconnected? Do you know what's going on there? So as far as I understand it, and again, there has been a, a lot of different implementations of Zigbee across the way. So uh, there's no right clear answer on this. The biggest thing, though, is that in thread, the border router function, because you're not paired directly, it's, you're not doing that translation within the hub, the border router is able to move between different devices, right? So you could have multiple HomePod minis or multiple uh, Apple TV 4Ks acting as your thread border router. And if any one of those drops, all the devices would be able to go over to that other thread border router and still continue working as if there was no issue at all, right? So you have a child device like the Eve Weather, for instance, which is a, a thread enabled child device. It will pair to an access point which could be a, a an Eve plug because that's acting as a thread router, right. right? So it'll hop through there. Eventually, you have to get through a gateway to the rest of the world, which is your thread border router. Our connected contenders went blow for blow in round one, but thread takes this one with its reduced latency and self-healing properties. After a brief breather, our two juggernauts are back at it, this time looking at range and device capacity. Range is a fairly tricky topic to tackle because there are so many different factors to consider like building materials, hub placement, node placement, and whether that node can help to carry along the message to its intended recipient, not to mention potential interference from other networks. The Zigbee Alliance claims that its signal can reach up to 300 meters line of sight and between 75 and 100 meters indoors. Anecdotally, I tested the range of the Acura Hub M1S, which uses Zigbee 3.0 with no signal repeaters, and I got a fairly strong signal at about 12 meters through three walls, but I did see a decrease in reliability at about 15 meters through a fourth wall. I should also probably mention that my apartment is made of concrete. Thread, on the other hand, seems to be a bit less forthcoming in terms of its range, stating typical devices in conjunction with mesh networking provide more than enough range to cover a normal home. Whatever that means. Eric from Modern Day Tech did some informal testing and showed that a thread network is capable of penetrating at least three layers of a home. I did some informal testing of my own, disconnecting all of my thread routers, just having my border router and an Eve Aqua downstairs at a distance of about 24 meters with concrete and steel everywhere, and I found that the network was still pretty damn solid. Shifting our attention now to just how complex of a network we can build, Zigbee has a theoretical capacity capacity of 65,000 devices, whereas Thread maxes out at a measly 12,000 more or less. <sighs> what a joke. Round 2 was a rough one, but considering it can support more than 5 times the amount of devices, Round 2 goes to Zig. In our third and final round, we consider the past and the present in an effort to determine what the future of these two standards could be. The idea of Zigbee as a low power, low latency personal area network has been around since 1998 and has since undergone standardization and revisions. As a result, it has been adopted by many major players in the smart home world, namely Philips Hue and Acura, at least here in the HomeKit bubble. Zigbee standardization and ubiquity have made it easier for manufacturers to implement this technology and have largely driven driven down the cost for consumers, with the obvious exception of Philips Hue. Thread is a relative newcomer with its certification and standards alliance, Thread Group, having only been formed in 2014. While there have been lots of rumblings about Thread's potential impact on IoT, rollout of Thread certified devices has been fairly sporadic, but notable with well-known companies like Nanoleaf and Eve Systems committing to the standard. Now, we've talked a lot about the similarities and differences between Zigbee and Thread at the networking level, but what about the application layer? How you and I actually use these protocols? And this, of course, brings us to Matter. 
Matter is claiming to be the foundation for connected things. It's a connectivity standard that aims to reduce confusion for consumers and increase interoperability among vendors by providing a single unifying platform on which devices can be developed. So do you think Zigbee's just going to disappear? What's your take on that? I don't think Zigbee's going to disappear for quite a while, right? It is a very established, hardened technology. It's been around for a long time, right? Um, matter and a lot of people kind of, if I look at like the pundits or, or the, the, the people on the, the Facebook boards and those kinds of things, they're like, you say the word matter, you automatically think thread, right? right? And that's not at all the case. Matter right. will run on top of thread. Matter will run on top of Wi-Fi, on top of Ethernet. And quite frankly, because matter is a, an a application layer on top of IP, it could run on top of anything that supports the internet protocol. So Matter will be able to work on bridges, on hubs, right, uh, that are still going to speak Zigbee on what I would call the southbound side. So he, Philips Hue, for instance, is committed to and is publicly stated they're going to implement Matter on their bridge. Right. I can see Akara doing the same thing, IKEA basically doing the same thing, right? So a lot of the things that are out there have a path forward into this new world. And I tend to agree. The Zigbee Alliance, or what is now known as the Connectivity Standards Alliance, is actually managing and guiding the certification process for Matter. So it wouldn't make much sense for them to cannibalize their own protocol, would it? In a press release from May 2021 that announced Matter as the official connectivity standard that came out of the Connected Home Over IP Working Group and that also announced the name change from the Zigbee Alliance to the Connectivity Standards Alliance, there was mention of Matter over Ethernet, over Wi-Fi, and even over Thread, but there was a mysterious lack of mention of Matter over Zigbee. It did mention, however, that this is just the first set of standards standards to be released and that more would be expanding in the future and I have to think that this is going to include matter over Zigbee. Now I'm no Nostradamus but it seems to me that the future of both of these connectivity standards is very very strong so I'm calling round three a drop. Recapping our raucous rumble, round one saw latency loom with thread rocking Zigbee as we look at speed and reliability. Round two went to Zigbee with the sheer magnitude of devices that can be integrated into the network. And finally, our last round focused on the future with the forecast looking favorable for both of our formidable fighters, so I'm calling today's match a draw. Both Zigbee and Thread are fast, dependable, expandable, and are great options for the future of your smart home, and you really can't go wrong with either one. The good news is, you don't have to. Both of these networks work really well side by side and, at least for now, complement each other quite well. Do you disagree with today's scorecard? What other factors would you consider when comparing these two protocols? Let us know in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to check out the description box for all of the links and resources that we use for today's video, as well as a link to our blog over at myhomekithome.com and our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at myhomekithome. Well, I do thank you for joining us on this installment of HomeKit Versus, and we hope to see you in the next one.